Number 20. What changes occur to the atomic number and the mass of a nucleus during each of the following decay scenarios? And then we have an electron is captured. Okay. So we have the term captured. There's two types of, um, types of decay scenarios, right? We either have something being emitted into the environment, uh, you know, the part, the, the particle is being emitted into the environment or we're capturing it and we're keeping it to ourselves. Wah. In this case, our particle is being captured, which means that we are not putting it out there, right? We're taking it all in for ourselves, which means that if you're capturing a particle, that particle, what do you think? Is that particle going to be on the product side or the reactant side? If it's in the product side, that means that you're giving it away. And yeah, we want to capture that. So we know that the particle is going to be on the reactant side. We are keeping it all to ourselves. So you can have, you know, alpha capture, beta capture, positronic capture, whatever. In this case, we're dealing with an electron. Now, an electron is the same thing as saying a beta particle, right? So just different ways of saying the same thing. They could have said an electron is captured or you're undergoing beta capture. Tomato, tomato. So now when I do draw my arrow, I know that my subatomic, well, I guess, yeah, my subatomic particle, my electron, is going to be on my reactant side. So let's draw the nuclei notation, the three boxes, for that electron. And I guess, since we're talking about it in terms of an electron, let's use the E, right? E for electron. If you want, you could put that beta there. It's the same exact idea. Now, an electron has no mass because it's not in the nucleus, so zero on top, but it has a charge of a minus one. And now you're capturing it with your, you know, radioactive material. So let's bring in another arrow and I'm going a little bit off to the side here. So let's just pull it back in and we'll say that this is, you know, whatever the radioactive material is. And I mean, just for these case and purposes, we can, you know, use whatever, I don't care, right? Carbon, and then we'll have a 14 on the top. Generally, that's the radioactive number. The numbers on the top is the mass. So this is the atomic mass, the mass of the nucleus, and then the bottom is the atomic number. Okay. Now the atomic number for carbon is always going to be the same number, which is found on the periodic table, which is six. So now let's just see what's going to happen to my nucleus, right? Well, we start off with 14 plus zero. That number is not going to change. So as far as my atomic mass goes, my atomic mass will remain the same. It's unchanged. Okay, that's cool. But then what's going on with my atomic number? Six minus one, right? Or six plus a negative one, same thing. Six minus one is now a five. So your atomic number is going to change and it will decrease. And we'll say it will decrease by one. And if you wanted to find out who the element is, always use that atomic number. Number five on the periodic table is big bad boron, the BBB. <laughs> so big bad boron. And that's the answer for this. Ooh, that's a little close. That is the answer for this. I hope this helped you out. Um, thank you so much for viewing the video. We got math videos on the channel. We got physics videos on the channel. My brother and I, we really do thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. This channel would not be where it is without you guys. So I'm so glad that you're learning from this channel and that we can give you great educational information. We just opened up memberships on the channel. If you want to help us out a little bit more, we got big plans for this year, this upcoming school year. And we hope that, you know, we can pull through and I think we will. I know we will. All right. But anyway, have a great day. Keep studying hard and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.